What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades. Well, you see in front of you we've got a package. So this must be an unboxing video, Baz on Blades. And you know what? I have the smartest subscribers in the world because yes, it is an unboxing video. And again, I typically do not like to do unboxing videos because they're sort of boring. But like in my last unboxing video, which was on the, uh, the Kershaw Natrix carbon fiber, right here, uh, when it comes to import Kershaw's, I, uh, I see a good reason to do an unboxing video because um, there is a little bit of an issue with consistency with Chinese made Kershaw products. Uh, when they're good, they're great. When they're not great, they're not good. So we're going to do an unboxing here, see what this knife looks like coming straight out of the box. And what knife is it? This is the new Natrix Mini in copper. Uh, potentially the most anticipated knife release of 2018. And... Uh, it's been anticipated for a long time and for this opening what we're going to use is since we're going to open with a copper knife uh, We're going to open with some copper here and this is my Boker Plus Lucas Burnley design Quiken. This is a Blade HQ exclusive in copper bolsters and backspacer with the marbled carbon fiber. Now I've done a review of this knife already. Uh, you can take a minute and check that out if you want. I would appreciate it. But I thought it would be sort of cool. We're going to use some copper to open up the packaging for this copper Natrix. And you know what? I honestly did not know if we would get this knife in 2018. Uh, it has been quite a wait. And everybody was, you know, just going crazy wanting this knife. Uh, I believe, honestly, it's probably the most anticipated knife release of 2018, or if not the most, then one of the most anticipated. And uh, it comes in the regular old Kershaw red box that the, most of the import knives come in. And you can see... Is that focused? I can't tell. Uh, 7006 CU, the Natrix Copper. So let's get this thing open, guys. I am uh, as excited as a little girl. And uh, as typical, inside the box, with the knife in the plastic bag, we're going to find uh, just the typical uh, packaging accoutrement which is the owner's manual sort of uh, fold-out thing that tells, you know, uh, this is a knife, it's sharp on one end, you hold it on the opposite end, and care instructions. Now, this is interesting to me. Uh, and I have got multiple copper products from different manufacturers. Again, uh, we've got this, this Boker Plus Quike, and, and you can see the copper is starting to patina on it, guys. And, it, oh, my God, it is looking so good. So good. You know, I've seen, um, I've seen swimsuit models that weren't as pretty as this knife. But uh, I've also, I got the, uh, the recently released uh, Olight Copper Light, and uh, that was the I3T EOS model. And I have not done a review on this. I should have done a review on it before it started to patina, but you can see it's starting to patina already. Uh, so I am experienced with copper products. Now, what I find funny with this is this is not vacuum sealed packaging. This is the first copper product that I have gotten from a manufacturer that was not vacuum sealed to keep the copper from uh, start, uh, starting to patina before it got to the customer. So I find that very interesting. Now, let's see here. Let's take a very quick look. Uh, the centering is pretty decent. Uh, not absolutely perfect, uh, but I have seen multiple reports that uh, there is quite a bit of a lock bar tension causing uh, the blade centering to be off towards the show side and that is the direction that this is off and it is if it's just a hair off 
uh, that's about it. So I'm, I'm fairly pleased with that. Uh, let's see here. This is a stone wash finish, and this copper, it is a, it's a fairly dull finish, guys. I hope that I'm capturing that. Um, it is a much duller type of surface finish than this that you see on the boker here. You can see the difference in the reflection of the light. Um, and, and this is like a stone wash finish. Um, I don't really... The darkening on it is probably the early onset of patina. Um, you know, so that's that's okay. And, you know, this is a small knife. It's a mini version of the Natrix. Let's go ahead and and we'll pull this Natrix carbon fiber out and you can see the difference. This copper version is much more compact and uh, I believe it's a 2.75 inch blade. Uh, great detent right there on the first flip guys. Uh, very satisfying, very intuitive opening. Um, yes, it's very, very crisp. The detent itself has a crisp feel, much like I reported happily with this carbon fiber Natrix. Uh, they are very, both of them are very crisp, guys. I, I don't know if I could fail that at all. Uh, I'm very happy about that. Let's check real quick. No blade play. No blade play, guys. So... Well, I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty decent so far. Uh, we'll take a look at the lockup here. The lockup is, it's it's full lockup. I, you know, I've, I've seen that most of the subframe locks, the Chinese made subframe locks uh, from Kershaw are looking at about 50% lockup. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not seeing a lot of issues here, guys. Uh, this is a fairly aggressive looking um stone wash finish on this d2 blade that's the you know one of the other big changes for this uh iteration of the natrix that everybody was happy about uh let's take a look here 7006 cu kai cutlery and there you go your steel designator d2 so that's something that people were pretty happy with um I'm going to say straight out of the box on this, <clears throat> I'm not super excited about the finish on the copper. This is a, uh, it's a sort of a coarse stone wash finish. And it does, as far as that goes, it matches the blade here. But copper is much softer than steel, of course. And um, the stone washing on this is it's it's approaching the level of a texture, and I think I, I'm eager to see how this um, affects the way that it will take patina. But uh, initially, just straight out, it's sort of a. I mean, we're down here, and I've got two huge studio lights over my uh, video table here, guys. Uh, and I'm just running one bulb in each of them, but uh, it's it's fairly aggressive light, and and you can see that there's not a lot of reflection going on here. There's a little bit of flare from just an abundance of lighting, but not a lot of reflection. And then you see in the blade, we can get quite a bit of reflection and sheen enough to even blur out uh, the fairly large Kershaw marking on the on the show side of the blade. So this is a fairly aggressive stone wash finish. I, I was not expecting that. Um, even though I have watched a couple of videos. Now Brian over at Slicey Dicey, uh, if you are not a sub of Slicey Dicey, um, the channel, go on over there and sub. Uh, Brian got his in a few days ago, did an initial impression, and even watching his video a couple of times, it didn't really come across how sort of dull this finish is, guys. Um, overall, this knife is finished fairly dull. The, the pivot 
has a, like a, a bead blast finish on it. Uh, you've got an aggressive stone wash on the blade, the aggressive stone wash on the on the handle here. Um, you know, you've got a, a, a light bead blast finished, <clears throat> I'm sorry, on the pocket clip and the subframe lock. Um, but that's pretty much um, even the finish on the the body screws, which are uh, T6 screws, but they're large headed. Um, it, it's fairly dull finish. Now, uh, filling in the hand since this is much smaller, um, and I'm in, I have medium size hands. Uh, I wear a medium glove because I have, you know, sort of a full hand volume but short fingers. Um, it feels um, a lot like a, a, you know, a subcompact type uh, pistol feels in your hand when your pinky doesn't quite, it doesn't quite have enough room down here. Um, you know, to really get a purchase. I've got some purchase on it, uh, but it's not a full grip. It doesn't feel, um, it doesn't feel super small in my hands. Um, it's really sort of the size of the fraction folder, if you guys are familiar with that. If you're not, I've got a review of that up. Uh, just go to the playlist, knife review playlist, and check that out. Um, but these are about the same size, and again, uh, let's look at the regular size Natrix. See, it is quite a bit more compact, guys. Quite a bit more compact. We'll switch these around for aspect ratio. Uh, still, it doesn't affect it. It is quite a bit more compact. Um, so, initial impressions. Fit and finish wise, oh look at that, that's that's pretty doggone good guys. The way those uh, ball milled, um, this groove, this, I don't know what you call it guys, blood groove, it's it's not anything like that, it's, it's um, uh, totally 100% just uh, aesthetic, uh, that fuller groove there, but it does meet very, very even on this uh, example on the spine of the blade. So I'm very happy with that. Um, fit and finish. I mean, it looks pretty good, guys. It does, you know, the fit and finish on mine is pretty good. The action is good. The centering is, you know, decent. Um, I Actually, the way it feels, I think I could tighten that pivot down just a, maybe a quarter of a turn, and it might bring that centering back in that's a t8 let's look very quickly here get the tool out this weha tool guys and uh see if we can is that the t8 uh, that might be the t8 right there we'll get that t8 on it yes it is and let's see what we see here on this Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Right back to center, guys. Perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Still got sweet action. Very smooth. No issues there. Uh, not quite drop shutty. It takes a little bit of shake. But, I mean, this is a... It's a 2.75 inch blade. And that looks... That blade stock looks to be maybe a hundred and ten thousandths of an inch, guys. It's not super heavy. There's not a lot of weight there. And speaking of weight, um, really, guys, this this is not that heavy of a knife. If you look through the uh, the cutout here on the subframe lock, you're going to see the scales are. Uh, they are pocket milled on the inside. Uh, there are already a couple of disassembly videos out on this knife. And um, the show side is extensively uh, pocket milled. And then the lock side does have a couple of pockets here that are milled also to lighten it up. So it honestly, it feels lighter than I anticipated. Well, I wasn't prepared for this, but let's pull the scale out and check this out, guys. Let's check this out. Right now it's set to ounces, and it's going to go 
3.42 is not too awful bad for a copper knife, guys. Let's pull this boker back out here. Take a look at it. 5.36. Now, this is a 3.5 inch blade knife, um, you know, with a steel frame and all of that. So, uh, this is not really, that's not that bad, guys. 3.42, that is well within uh, what I would consider to be acceptable for an EDC type of knife, which I don't really care too much about weight, doesn't bother me. Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm decently happy with this, I think. Oh, yeah, that D10 is great. The D10 is great, and the, the it just, it rolls smooth. There's a, there's a little tick in there. I'm already up past the, uh, the detent there. Right there, there's a little tick. I don't know exactly what that is. That could be, there's a couple of washers that are on the inside of this, hardened steel washers and milled pockets on the copper that will, uh, the bearings roll on. And it may be there's a piece of dirt or something in there. I'm not sure, guys. It feels pretty clean. So, well, there you go. I mean, that's that's not pretty, that's, uh, not too bad, guys. So it's a little duller finish than I thought, um, which, you know, may aid in the way that it patinas. Uh, who knows? Uh, the fit and finish on mine is pretty doggone good. I don't I don't really see any huge issues with it. Uh, you know, some little flaring here at the base of the uh, secondary or edge grind. And that's a, you know, that's a known thing with the Natrix because it does have this big, wide, soft, radius plunge. And then the sharpening choil is not, it does not come out past the plunge. This one would have to come out uh, another three sixteenths of an inch, uh, maybe three millimeters you know four millimeters maybe oh and i didn't we didn't look at the backspacer here it's the same type of backspacer that uh pretty much goes across the the matrix models there's that sort of semi floating looking uh zytel backspacer it is an injection molded like a zytel you can see the molding line on that uh it is cleanly done but uh you know, it is an, an injection molded piece. Uh, that would be nice uh, for the aftermarket guys, the mod guys, if they want to do something maybe in like carbon fiber or black G10 um, or even, you know, a copper to drop in there. Although I don't know that I would put copper in it. I sort of like the way the black breaks up the copper uh, a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, guys. Uh, this, is, this isn't bad. Um, so, we're not going to go any further. Oh, my God. We're almost 20 minutes in on just an unboxing video, guys. I've just been droning on and on and on. I apologize for that. I sort of lost track of the time. Let's get this closed back out. Let's get all the rest of this crapola out of the uh, frame here. And... Um, uh, for those of you that are thinking about this model, now it is going to be a regular production model from what I understand. Uh, initially, it may be a little hard to get a hold of. So many units are going into pre-sales because all of the retailers were doing pre-sales. And, um, you know, it, it's just going to be hard to grab one up. Um, now, I did not get mine from an established retailer. I got mine from a uh, eBay seller, and uh, I honestly, I cannot remember their name. I will be sure to mention their name uh, when I do my review because this is uh, the second order I've gotten from them. Uh, they are very quick, very fairly priced. I just paid $51 for this, where everybody else is selling them for $59. And that $51.99 included free ship, and I had it in two days. I think it's a Kershaw Spider Co. guy. 
Kershaw Spider Co. guy? It may be that, guys. If you go on eBay and you do a search on this knife and you find somebody that's Kershaw Spider Co. guy and he's got like 100% positive feedback, something like that, and a gazillion transactions, that's probably the same person. Just do me a favor. Be sure and drop down to the comment section if you order from them and let them know that Baz on Blade sent you. And by the time I do my review on this, I will have their exact information. Uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, the Kershaw Natrix Copper. Um, much anticipated, and it looks like, at least in my example initially, that it was worth the wait. All right, guys. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.